Hello world, it's Mike White with 143 and I'm back with a very fun tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to create an image like what's on my screen completely from scratch using Microsoft Copilot's photopia.com and an AI upscaler. All of it completely free. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Microsoft Copilot and it's just at copilot.microsoft.com if you're looking for it. And I pay for Copilot professionally, but I decided to sign out and sign in as just a regular user uh, that's not paying so that you can see what I get completely for free. And the reason I pay is I just use it so much. Um, and I like the landscaped images that I get uh, when, I, when I pay for it. So let's get started. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to make a fun kid's birthday uh, thing. And we have, you know, I already have an image that I've downloaded that I'm going to work with. Um, I've already shown you the result. I'm going to show you how I achieved it. But I want to show you first how to generate your own image. And you literally just go to Copilot and, you know, say you've got a nephew or somebody that's having a birthday. And you just, you know, type in something that you know this kid will like. You know, this kid that I'm imagining likes dinosaurs. So I'm going to say a cute dinosaur wearing sunglasses and riding in a Jeep. And then I'm going to tell it some things about how I want it to create that cute dinosaur wearing those sunglasses riding in the Jeep. So I'm going to say cartoon style. Probably would have already got that saying cute anyway. And I'm going to say isolated on white. And give it a whirl. And it's always a crapshoot. You never know what you're going to get. So, you know, you just let it generate some images and pick the best one. And as you can see, I've got several cute ones. Um, this one, it doesn't have a steering wheel. I do like the cowboy hat though. So if he liked cowboy hats as well, you know, if that was more his style, I'd go with that. Um, this one, he's not holding the wheel at all. Uh, this one, I think he's driving on the left-hand side. All of them, you know, he's filling up the entire thing, but that's, that's because I said cute and cartoon style. So it's a little bit like overloaded. And of these, I'd probably pick this one. This is the one I'd probably run with. So there we go. So to get that down to my computer, I would just click here and hit download. But I have already downloaded the one that we're gonna work with. And I have that right here. So here we go, let's get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is upscale the image. So we know that it's come down, you know, fairly large from Copilot. It, you know, renders some nice size images, but we want it to be a lot bigger so that we can work with it a lot easier and then we can actually print it like as a DTF transfer. So I'm at iloveimg.com and this is a new program that I just found just the other day. There's, I guess, dozens out there, uh, but this one seemed to do a really great job. And so I'm just going to, you know, go to, it's I Love IMG Upscale Image. So I'm not sure exactly the path. I just found this by Googling. Like the path to find it, that is the actual path. And I'm just going to find that image in my downloads folder that I just rendered and saved. And I'm going to let it work its magic. Okay, and it tells me I could do a 4X, uh, upscale and that's what I want to do. I want it as big as possible. Now if your computer struggles with large images you probably don't want to go 4x but why not you know if you can. Okay and it's done thinking I'm just going to click upscale and I'm going to hit download and it has downloaded my image and it looks exactly the same to, to the naked eye you know. It's just if you zoom in, you're gonna see a lot sharper, less fuzzy, okay? So that's at 160%, that's 100%. This thing's huge now, which is wonderful. 
and it's just going to be a lot easier to remove the background when you have more pixels. We're going to get a tighter, you know, background removal when we have more pixels like this. Okay, we're going to switch over to Photopea. So some people call this Photopea. I call it Photopea. Photopea.com. I have no idea how to pronounce it, but it's completely free and it works quite a lot like Photoshop. So I'm just going to find my downloaded folder. And so that upscaler just saved it in the same directory in my downloads directory, but it put a one after it. And I'm just gonna open it up and I'm gonna look at the image size. Yeah, it's huge. 7168 by 4096, that's great. Okay, so we have a few things to do here. One, he has a dislocated tail or a really long tail sticking under the seat, which is very cute. But he also, <coughs> excuse me, has a um, tire here that is not complete. So this is kind of messed up. And then we also have this problem of this uh, scarf that's hanging in the wind there. So some things I like to do, you know, before I remove the background, some things I like to do after I remove the background. Everything's possible, really doesn't matter. You know, your, your, your order of operations is not critical here. But what I, I'm gonna do first is just, you know, fix the problem that I see here in this, in this part of the image. I mean, it's, it's AI, we got this great image for free. So I'm just using Control Plus and Control Minus. So Control Plus, hold Control on your keyboard and hit Plus to zoom in and then minus to zoom out. So here we go. And then to move around the image, I'm using my middle mouse button and I'm clicking it, which I know not all mice have that, or at least they didn't used to, but most modern mice, you can just hold down your middle mouse button and that selects that, it turns it into that hand. And if you can't do that for some reason, you could use the hand tool over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my lasso and this is why we have, you know, this is why we're in so tight. You know, this is an odd thing that I experience with this application sometimes. Sometimes I'll actually be, um, I don't want to move the image, you know, I don't want to move it. That's bad. I just want to move around to get to where I want to go. And sometimes my control plus trick does not work. It actually zooms the browser in. So just want to get in here real tight. And I'm just going to select this area. So I've grabbed the lasso tool and I'm just going to draw. And I always like to say at this moment that if you have trouble drawing the way I do, then maybe your mouse speed is up too high or just too high for these types of operations. So if you want to just turn your mouse speed down in your settings, which you can just go to your, you know, control panel and just adjust your mouse speed. So there's many ways you could do this. I've just chosen to use this method right here. And then I'm going to do a new layer. So I'm going to come down here and click on this little icon for new layer. And then I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool. Make sure it's set to black. I can increase the size of it by using the bracket keys. There's two bracket keys next to the P on your keyboard and just hitting the right one makes that it makes it larger. And I'm just going to paint in that area. And I see this rippling effect that I don't like. So I'm actually just going to go here, go to my brush settings and turn my spacing down so that I get a real smooth brush. So that's just a little brush settings. Don't let that wig out. And then I've got this, and I'm going to try to adjust the hardness of my brush. So I'm gonna turn it down to like a 50% hard brush. And I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And I'm gonna fine tune these edges. So I'm just gonna come in here, and with my softer brush, you know, just dress this up. So that I don't have a hard, weird edge there. 
And this is my tip of the day right here. Just, you know, if something's bothering you and you don't know what to do and it's in the middle of your image, just paint it black. It goes away. <laughs> That's a new discovery of mine. All right, so now I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and we're gonna, well, no, I'm gonna remove the background. Don't get ahead of yourself, Mike. Here we go. So let's grab our magic wand and I'm gonna turn my tolerance way up. So I wanna to go to like, um, you know, probably like an 80 tolerance and just see how that gets me. And I'm gonna merge this down. I'm gonna hit Control E and see if that works. Yeah, Control E to merge down. And then I'm just gonna click once out here. And that 80 tolerance is perfect. It's really getting me a nice uh, select. You know, I see that it's it's caught some of the inside of this wheel and that's okay. I'm holding shift and clicking the other areas that I want to select. I want to cut out. Because I'd like to cut all of these at once and I'll show you why. Okay, so I've got, I've shift selected all the different areas. And now I'm going to grab my um, lasso select again. I'm going to hold alt to actually deselect with this tool. And so I just don't want to cut out that little area around the tire. And I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to get in real close here. Really didn't get close enough there. So I'm just going to zoom in, hold alt and go straight, cut straight across, just like you're cutting it. And then I'm gonna hold Alt, and tune this up. I'm holding Alt on my keyboard, and just going around the area that got selected that I don't want to actually cut anything out. And that's great. And this is the moment why I wanted everything to be the same. I wanted to select all the areas that I possibly could at once because I'm about to expand my selection. If you come in real close here, you can see it's tight, but there's a little bit of like, you know, we call that a fake outline, a little bit of a, an edge there. So I'm just going to do select, modify, and I'm going to hit expand. And I'm just going to go in about one pixel and see how that goes. And I can have that checked. It won't matter in this case. And now you can see that my select is just inside the area. And I think there's a lot of forgiveness in this image because it's such a simple design. So I'm just going to go one more just to be safe. Okay. And now I'm just going to hit the delete key. And that has popped that background off there. Awesome. So now we're going to deal with his second scarf. I don't know where that scarf's coming from. And I don't know what our AI friend was thinking when it, you know, added that scarf in. But I'm just going to do the same trick and just cut it off right where I don't want it. And I kind of wiggled here at the bottom. So I'm not real proud of that. So I'm just gonna hit hold alt. And deselect that part, circle the part I don't want to cut. Now I'm gonna hold shift and just circle the rest of the scarf. And then I'm gonna hit delete. And boom, we fixed up, fixed up his weird scarf. All right, so now I'm just going to change my canvas size. And I just want a little bit of room at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to check this relative box and tell it that I want a height of 3000. And that's, of course, relative to the size of the image that you're doing, too. You know, so you have to make a decision about what um, what size the image is. And then I'd like to know where the center of this document is. So I'm going to hit Control Shift R to start my rulers. And I'm just going to pull a ruler down. And that one's not my center. That's actually going to be a guideline for my text. And I'll pull a ruler out and it should snap. It's, it's, you can see it just kind of jump. So that tells me that's dead center. 
And I also want to make sure my drawing is centered. So I'm just going to switch to my move tool here and then just make sure that I click this. It says select multiple layers. Hmm. I want it to center to the canvas. I'm not sure if that's something that it can do. Oh, no nope. folder. Hmm. No, not sure. Well, there you go. In Photoshop, it's right up here, but I'm not sure how to do that here, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so apparently I have to center, you know, if I have another object to center with, which makes sense. That's fine. I just wanted to center on the canvas. It looks fairly centered to me anyway. All right. So now let's just drag in another guideline. And I'm going to put this, and it kind of snapped to the side of that truck, which is lovely. It's exactly what I was hoping it would do. And then it snapped there. So now I've got, it's probably hard to see on the video, but I've got three lines and a, and a horizontal line. And I'm going to use those to help me draw. So I'm going to grab my pen tool because I want to make that arch text. So I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm just going to click right here in the center of this line once. And I'm going to go right above his head. Oops. Click. And then I'm going to hold shift. That's what I did wrong just now. Is I actually clicked, uh, held shift while I clicked. And I'm just going to pull that out evenly so it's centered and it's even. And then I'm going to click right where this other guideline is. And I think that curve snapped, but I'm not sure. Now, I'm not super happy with the shape after I saw the completed curve. So I'm just going to hit Control Z, Control Z. And I'm going to try again. Nope, I did the same thing. I held Shift. Click and then hold Shift. Because I do want it to be constrained. Holding shift is constraining it to that axis. And then click. Okay, and I like that curve better. Awesome. So now I'm going to switch to my text tool. And I don't know what... We're going to use this Della Gothic 1. I think that's what I used before. It's not a big deal. And I'm going to set my image size... Whenever I deal with text, I like to change the DPI to 300. All right. And that just, you know, helps with the um, font size. You know, you won't have some crazy uh, setting up here. And as far as a font size, I think I'm gonna choose something like 150 pixels. And I think that's the height of each letter. And I've just clicked and I've got a text layer that started over here because I had my text tool selected and I clicked on the, uh, the curve. So I believe it's going to uh, be on the curve. And I realized immediately that I don't want that. I want it to be centered. And so I'm going to back up. I'm going to hit escape. And that just canceled things. So I made sure I centered first. And I do need a bigger size than that. Let's do 600. It's a lot bigger. Yeah, I still want it bigger than that. So we're going to make it 1,200. And that's too big. 1,000. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. And so I'm just going to click off of that and deselect that text. And then I'm going to grab my text tool again. And I'm just scrolling to go down. And I still got the big size. And I'm just going to type fifth birthday. And that's too big. So I'm just going to hit control A to select all my text and change my size up here to 800. And that's still too big, you know. I want this to stay inside these guidelines. So I'm just going to just grab this and I'm going to turn on my, I grab my move tool and I'm going to turn on my transform controls and I'm going to hold alt. Well, it's not letting me do that. I think this is having a little bit of a problem because of this. not sure why that path is is in the way 
See how that's selecting itself every time? So that path is so just, you know, it's buggy. It's free software. It's wonderful software. That path is causing a problem every time, so I'm just going to delete it and get it out of my way. And I think this actually happened to me before when I tried this before. All right, now I can move. And I'm going to hold Alt and scale this in. And then I'm just going to eyeball it. I got my move tool selected. And I can hold shift if I want it to move more. I'm going to scoot this up. And I think I can stretch this if I, if I grab it. No, I don't want that. Yeah, just make that taller. Not too much. I don't want to distort the font too much. Okay, and then I see that this is not, um, you know, Jaden's is not centered here. So I'm going to try that centering trick with all of them selected. And that's way better. Okay, so everything's centered. And now we just need to color it. So I'm going to grab this fifth birthday. And I totally can't remember what my example image looked like, but I'm just going to do what I would naturally do and just use some colors from the image. And I have just selected this color picker. Let me make sure I show you how I did that. So I clicked on fifth birthday and then my natural inclination was to go for my color picker on the left here. And then I'm just going to choose this orange and hit OK. And that did not work. So I'm switching to my text tool and I'm going to grab the color picker again and click on what I selected and hit OK. And that did not work. So I'm going to select all of my text and click up here on the color picker for the text and click the color that I'd want and see if that worked. Nope. So bear with me. You know that I'm not an expert at this. I use Photoshop, darn it. So I've selected my color and I'm not sure why it's not working for me. Okay, it doesn't like me picking the color from over there. That should do it. All right, well, we learned something there. I learned something. All right, so now if I want to change this color, and I just want to use this green, hit OK. Perfect. I actually think that's opposite of what I did before. But it doesn't matter, you know, because this is about showing you guys how to do your own thing. All right, so let's wrap it up. We're done. I'm gonna hit image trim and trim it to the top left pixel color or to transparent. Either one is fine. Either one's gonna give us the same result of a nice trimmed image. And then I'm gonna look at my image size and I wanna switch this to pixels, turn on resample, switch this to pixels. And my width, I wanna set it to 3600. That'll give me a 12 by 12 image. I mean. It's actually 12 by whatever this height is. So 12 by 14.13. So I'm not going to use anything that big. You know, I'm doing this for a kid. I probably need it to be about eight inches wide, 2,400 pixels, maybe 3,000 at the most. But I don't want to have too many and go way overkill on pixels because that just slows everything down and junks everything up. But I definitely don't want to have too little. That, you know, we went through all the trouble of upscaling and being very precise. And now I've resized it. And I'm going to export it as a PNG. And it's coming up. And I'm just going to hit save. And I have just found it in my downloads folder. And it's really high res. And it's going to be perfect. It's perfect. Perfect, just the way it is. Okay, so it's ready. My next step is to go to the 143 DTF page, and I can literally just hit upload, choose that image. It's probably gonna tell me it can make it a 12 by 12. It might choose 12 by 17. It picked 12 by 17. I can literally just add that to cart. And I'm ready to check out. 
hey, I hope that helps. I hope that, you know, was informative and not too boring. And I hope you have lots of fun using these tools to make some great images. Have a great day. Thanks for being a 143 customer. Goodbye.